Hello and welcome to our Sunday service. My name is Reverend Kate Dean and I am proud to serve as the minister for this Unitarian spiritual community here in Hampstead in North London. Our chapel is a spiritual home for open minds. Now today we celebrate the life of the Bengali poet and Nobel laureate Rabindranath Tagore. He was born on the 7th of May, nearly 160 years ago. He was a member of the progressive Hindu group, the Brahma Samaj, which has historic links with our chapel. We are delighted to welcome our guest speaker today, Dr Ray Chowdhury, who will be speaking about this remarkable man and his connections with the Unitarians. We begin by lighting our chalice, the symbol of our liberal religious faith. May this flame be as the light of knowledge in our minds and the warmth of love in our hearts. Since we aren't together, we can't turn to each other, shake hands or welcome each other to chapel this morning. But I do hope that you are able to greet someone, maybe someone you love or someone you don't know so well, at a distance of course, today. We are also able to offer a children's chapel session on our YouTube channel, so please do tune in for that as well. We continue to uh, welcome donations through our virtual connection plate. You can give through the Just Giving page or you can donate through our own chapel website. We are always very grateful for any donations that we receive that go towards the upkeep of our beautiful chapel and grounds. A reading from Gitanjali by Rabindranath Tagore. The morning sea of silence broke into ripples of bird songs, and the flowers were all merry by the roadside, and the wealth of gold was scattered through the rift of the clouds, while we busily went along our way and paid no heed. We sang no glad songs nor played, we went not to the village for barter. We spoke not a word nor smiled. We lingered not on the way. We quickened our pace more and more as the time sped by. And the sun rose in the mid sky and doves cooed in the shade. Withered leaves danced and whirled in the hot air of noon. The shepherd boy drowsed and dreamed in the shadow of the banyan tree, and I laid myself down by the water and stretched my tired limbs on the grass. My companions laughed at me in scorn. They held their heads high and hurried on. They never looked back nor rested. They vanished in the distant blue haze. They crossed many meadows and hills and passed through strange, faraway countries, all to honour you, heroic host of the interminable path. Mockery and reproach pricked me to rise, but found no response in me. I gave myself up for lost in the depth of a glad humiliation, in the shadow of a dim delight. The repose of the sun-embroidered green gloom slowly spread over my heart. I forgot for what I had travelled and I surrendered my mind without struggle to the maze of shadows and songs. At last, when I woke from my slumber and opened my eyes, I saw thee standing by me, flooding my sleep with thy smile. How I had feared that the path was long and wearisome and the struggle to reach thee was hard.
numerous strings in your lute. Let me add my own among them. There are numerous strings in Smite your cords, my heart will break its silence, and my heart will be one with your song. There are numerous strings in your I'm reading the verse number 63 from Song Offerings by Rabindranath Tagore. Thou hast made me known to friends whom I knew not. Thou hast given me seats in homes not my own. Thou hast brought the distant near and made a brother of the stranger. I am uneasy at heart when I have to leave my accustomed shelter. I forget that there abides the old in the new, and that there also thou abidest. Through birth and death, in this world or in others, wherever thou leadest me, it is thou. The same, the one companion of my endless life, whoever linkest my heart with bonds of joy to the unfamiliar. When one knows thee, then alien there is none, then no door is shut. Oh, grant me my prayer that I may never lose the bliss of the touch of the one in the play of the many.
I recall my childhood when the sun burst to my bedside with a taste surprise. Faith in the marvelous bloomed anew each dawn. Flowers bursting fresh within my heart each day. Then looking on the world with simple joy, on insects, birds, and beasts, and common things, the grass and clouds had fullest well for four. My mother's voice gave meaning to the stars. Bursting fresh within my heart each day. Namaskar and welcome. This is Debashish Rai Choudhury from Kolkata, India. Well, I am a singer and a professor of English literature by vocation. And I also serve the Brahmo Samaj as a minister. This year, I was supposed to visit England and perform a few English hymns written by the Nobel laureate Rabindranath Tagore, which we had found in the hymn book of the Unitarian Universalists in America. However, because of this global disaster, I am addressing you online. Let me first express my gratitude and joy to the authorities of Roslyn Hill Unitarian Chapel, Hampstead, London, for inviting me to address you on the occasion of the birth anniversary of Rabindranath Tagore. Please consider me as a kindred soul who, as a part of the Brahmo Samaj, shares the same convictions and principles as the Unitarians. Here I symbolically share the light of the candle burning in your chapel that kindles the light of knowledge in our minds and the warmth of love in our hearts. Most of you probably know that we had connections with the Unitarians even before the Brahmo Samaj formally came into existence in Calcutta. Raja Ramuhan Roy, the pioneer of Indian Renaissance, was among other things a great scholar who studied Hindu, Islamic and Christian theologies to form the basis of a liberal, universal religion based on the concept of monotheism. Through his several polemical debates, he argued and convinced the Christians in Calcutta, like Mr. William Adam, that the true spirit of Christianity lies not in the Trinitarian orthodoxy, but 
in the Unitarianism. Thus, Mr. Adam renounced Trinitarianism and converted to Unitarianism. In September 1821, the Calcutta Unitarian Committee was originated under the direct patronage and financial support of Ram Mohan Roy, with Mr. Adam as the new Unitarian minister. Ram Mohan had regular connection with the Unitarians of England and America. In 1855, the American Unitarian Association established a Unitarian church in Calcutta under the leadership of Charles A. Dow, who was familiar with the next generation of Brahmo leaders like Keshav Chandra Sen, who also had direct contact with the Unitarians in England. This church holds a place of special significance to me as Keshav Chandra Sen had actually addressed a congregation of 600 people right in this chapel in 1870. Today we remember and celebrate the 159th birth anniversary of Rabindranath Tagore, who was not only a Nobel laureate literateur, but also a social activist, an environmentalist, a philosopher, an educationist, an artist, and a musician par excellence. Most importantly, he worked to bring about an ideal universal humanity who would be rational, liberal, and an amalgamation of the best ideals of humanism from the East and the West. In the Bengali-speaking world, Tagore is a household name for his 2,000-odd songs in Bengali, which express every shade of human feeling and experience. His songs have brought about the much-discussed modernity in the music of Bengal. In the Anglophone world, however, his songs are unknown because of the language barrier. But since a large part of his polemical writing is in English, he is known as a thinker in the West. At Dartington, where Leonard Elmhurst, his one-time secretary and an agricultural scientist, had set an institute in the model of Tagore's Sri Niketan, Tagore is still remembered as an environmentalist. In Tagore, we find a complete manifestation of the liberal religious values propagated by the Unitarians and the Brahmos. In the winter of 1912, he travelled from England to America to take rest with his daughter-in-law and son who was studying at the University of Urbana. There he was contacted, followed and celebrated by the Unitarian community. Tagore even responded to their request of delivering lectures and soon drew a faithful group of admirers there. It is not unlikely that he composed his English hymns, very few of them, in their request as he was having a close interaction with the Unitarians there. In this connection, we need to remember a rather significant comment by Mrs. Macy F. Seymour, who was the poet's hostess when he arrived in Urbana. In her article published in Vishobharati Quarterly, she remembered that the small town of Urbana was being set up 
and a Unitarian church was being found there with the poet when the poet arrived. She wrote, and I quote, It seems a happy coincidence that at the very moment that a liberal faith was manifesting itself publicly in Urbana, the representative of a great religious movement in India, the Brahmu Samaj, already associated with the Unitarian churches in America, should have appeared there. Unquote. Tagore was a true universalist and never believed in the artificial differences like race, religion, colour, language and nationality. His caffing critique of the idea of nationalism earned him the disfavour of the politicians. But this is perfectly in tune with the principles of the liberal religions of Brahmoism and Unitarian Universalism, which believe in the brotherhood of man. Almost 80 years have passed after his death, yet his beliefs and thoughts are all the more relevant today. The present global crisis is induced by the wrong treatment of nature by humans. Tagore taught us to live in harmony with nature and love our environment, not only with his rural reconstruction work, but also aesthetically by introducing several festivals to celebrate nature for which he composed plays and songs. His worldview, in tune with the Unitarian and Brahmo faith, sees man as a part of this entire creation and he taught us, through his works, to respect each element that surrounds us. Man should never try to dominate over nature or tamper it but should live in harmony with it. I would like to read a translation of the lyrics of a song composed in Bengali by Tagore. Jagatu jure udar shure anundu gaan baje She gaan kabe gubhiru rabe baje behiya maje And now the English. The joyous music resonates through the universe in magnificent tune. When would that deep music resonate within my heart? When would I love all the air, the water, the sky and the light? When would they be seated in the court of my heart in various forms? When would my mind be full of glee when I open my eyes? When would I be able to please all while passing my way? When would I accept easily that you are there? When would your name spontaneously resonate in all my efforts? Thus, Tagore's religious ideology includes man's relationship with nature. It is painful to realize that man, as a race, has failed in achieving the vision of Tagore. Man, in the third decade of the 21st century, has not only assaulted his surroundings, he has seared himself in the hatred of religious fanaticism, irrational beliefs, and thus brought on himself the threat of self-annihilation. Tagore's vision of the divine follows the tenets of universal religion. Shivanath Shastri, another Brahmo leader, had written in his book, I quote, 
This religion is essentially a religion of conscience. Its God is not enthroned in yonder skies or in a place called heaven, but is living in the soul as a silent witness of its conscience, ruling and guiding its inward life. Unquote. Tagore gives a final form to this liberal, rational, universal religion in a series of lectures he delivered in Oxford, which were published in his book, The Religion of Man. He writes, the Isha of our Upanishad, the super soul, which permeates all moving things, is the God of this human universe whose mind we share in all our true knowledge, love and service, and whom to reveal in ourselves through renunciation of self is the highest end of life. Selfless service to fellow humans by renunciation of one's self is therefore the liberation of the soul and also the experience of realizing the divine. And this life is a hard life, devoid of selfish aims and dedicated to the eternal man. In all his creative works, like plays and songs and poetry, he tried to portray life as a fearless experience that should essentially accommodate both pleasure and pain. Constantly ridden by death, life was difficult for him but he succeeded in turning sufferings into unique aesthetic creations. Hence, this can help all mortals to fearlessly transcend sorrows and death in the traumatic times like this. The relevance of Tagore's philosophy today lies in the fact that it acknowledges the hardships of life and the liberation of the eternal man and the subsuming of the individual self for the progressive transformation of the eternal man to the divine. As liberal religious churches, both Brahmos and Unitarians should work together to propagate the real spirit of liberal universalism in the present day world to prevent mankind from inflicting further suffering and pain to itself. It is the responsibility of these liberal churches to rid people of the imaginary, irrational, far-fetched and faulty ideation of the divine. Thank you.
Our closing blessing, words by Rabindranath Tagore. Where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where words come out from the depth of truth where tireless striving stretches its arms toward perfection, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert lands of dead habit, where the mind is led forward into an ever-widening thought and action, into that heaven of freedom, let my country awake. Blessed be and Amen. Thank you for joining us again this week. We hope to see you soon.